This is a pattern that a whole lot of great people have followed. Gandhi, Tesla, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, the Obamas, literally anyone who has made a big name for themselves. Literally anyone who has done anything influential and has added significantly to the human race. If you believe in God, you have to understand that God is perfect in God's own way. God makes no mistake and God makes does not create anything by chance. So the sheer fact that you exist, doesn't matter who you are, means that God brought you here perfectly and necessarily. Necessarily meaning that there is a reason for you to be here. You're not just, your job to be here is not just to sleep and wake up, go to work, pay taxes, and just die, retire. Look at the current state of the world that we live in right now. Many people, if not most people, are not living life and living life abundantly. We pretend that we're living life and living life abundantly because we have all these vices to help us forget that we are not actually not aligned with the purpose that God brought us into this world. Again, that is all by design. I'm not really going to go into details because I like my freedom. You but if you know what I'm talking about, you know exactly what I'm talking about. One. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode on Let's Talk About Us with Uche. I am your boy, Uche. If you are new to my podcast, please make sure to subscribe, share with your friends and family. If you are new to my YouTube channel, also please make sure to subscribe. Do not forget to hit that bell notification so anytime I upload a video, you'll be the very first to be notified. And anyone who's returning, thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate every single one of you guys. Please also do not forget to hit that thumbs up. This is how YouTube algorithm is able to pick up my stuff and show it to more people. This is some high caliber stuff that I do want to put out into the world. I put a lot of work, I put a lot of effort about to research and talk about what I'm talking about and it's coming from my soul. So this is not for clouds, this is just a compilation of some of the things that I've thought about all of my life and I feel like I'm actually finally can afford the privilege to live the purpose that God has put me in this world to do. Uh, so please, if you enjoy my content, please make sure to smash that like button so YouTube algorithm can pick it up and share with a bunch of other people who need it as well. Thank, Thank you so much for your continued support. So today, as you can see, I do want to talk about why everyone must pursue a PhD program. If not, you have have failed. Now, I understand that the PhD program is something that a lot of people shy away from for a really obvious reason. In America, a typical PhD program can be anywhere between four years to 10 years, depending on what school, depending on what program. A lot of people don't tend to work towards a PhD program for a very obvious reason. So I do understand that this particular topic may be unattractive to some people, but please, I promise you, stick with me to the end, and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. That's the first disclaimer. The second disclaimer is that please know that when I talk about PhD programs and also school systems, I will be using the American school system to make my point, but trust me, you do not have to be American. You do not have to be affiliated with the American school system or academic school system in order for you to relate to what I'm talking about. This is something that you can apply in your country, in your school system, in your personal life. This one, you will not be disappointed. That being said, first point is I want to start by defining what a PhD program is. Secondly, I do want to move on to describing the American school system, how it is set up. Again, I'm talking about the American school system, but this is something that could be applied to literally any school system including a school system in Nepal, a school system in South Africa, a school system in China, a school system in Nigeria. Trust me on this one. And then I'm going to move on to describe the school systems in a metaphoric way. So in a metaphoric way, I'm going to be using the library to describe the school system. And then later on, I'm going to apply the school systems that I've talked about in an everyday pragmatic way that anyone, literally anyone, irrespective of who you are, can apply themselves into this PSG program that I'm talking about. And then lastly, I'm going to be talking about OPAP or hashtag OPAP. Please stick to the end of this video and I'll explain what this hashtag means and why it is extremely important. That being said, let's get it. As you probably know, a PhD program in America and in most countries is the highest form of education that anyone can get in a school system. So a PhD program or a doctorate program is equivalent to an MD, a JD, ED, and so on and so PhD. forth. A PhD simply means philosophy in the study of whatever field that you're studying. So philosophy means the study of knowledge. So if you have a PhD in biology, that means that you are a doctorate in the philosophy specific of biology. So you can have a PhD in mathematics, PhD in engineering, PhD in philosophy itself. So which means that you have the highest earnable degree within that field. Like you are not just a master, you have been able to contribute your own original thinking into the general knowledge 
pool of that discipline. That's basically what a PhD is. So now for the next point that I'm going to be making, I'm going to be talking about the American education school system, specifically the higher education. So anything past high school, I'm going to be drawing. Hopefully you guys can see I'm this. I'm going to be drawing it out on the whiteboard. Hopefully you guys can see it. Hopefully it's not too much glare. This is my first time using this blackboard and recording with it. I usually write it to, you know, think of my thoughts, but this is my first time recording on camera. So hopefully there's not too many glare from the cameras and hopefully it's legible. Um, and I'm going to be explaining as I write as well. So again, I'm going to be talking about the American school system, how it is set up, higher education American school system. So anything beyond secondary school or high school, uh, depending on what country you're from. Again, I'm going to be talking about specifically the American school system, but this is something that could be translated and applied in your own individual school system, whatever country you're in. Like I mentioned, most countries follow basically the exact same thing, if not something similar. Uh, after in America, after you graduate from high school, you start off in a university. So American university, uh, or also called college, is typically four years. And then you have the master's program. It's typically one year to two years. And then you have a PhD program, which is typically between four years to 10 years, depending on your discipline, as I mentioned before. In America, this uh, four years is typically divided into two, depending on uh, your budget and also what part of the country you live in. Some people start off with a community college. So community college is the first two years of your schooling in uh, university. I think it's a system that was set up in the past to help people of low income to be able to go to local colleges and earn your electives, your general electives, which are not necessarily part of your major per se. So it's easier for you to earn them in a local college where you pay significantly less as opposed to going to a four year university and paying at a much, much higher tuition, especially if you're going to school out of town, out of state, or even out of country. It gets really expensive. So the community college or, or the two-year college is not something that is mandatory. You don't really have to do it. If you get accepted straight from a high school into a four-year university, then you go ahead and complete your four-year university. And like I mentioned, the university typically takes four years to complete. Some people, it takes them three years. Some people, it takes them a little bit longer. It took me about six and a half years for me to complete the university uh, school uh, system. I did four and a half years in a community college, and I did two years. Uh, I transferred the last of my two years at a university. And, and making it a total of six and a half years. Again, four years is just the average. Not everyone graduates in four years. And then you have the master's program, which is one typically between one to two years. It could be a little bit longer. Um, I've seen people who have three years master's programs, but the majority that I've seen is two years. When I did my first master's, it was two years. Some people, one year, especially an MBA. I know that I've never had an MBA before, but I know a lot of people who study MBAs is typically one year long. And then again, the PhD program, like I, I mentioned, is between four to 10 years. So now the way I understand this setup is a four year college is basically an indoctrination into the original thinkings that people have already thought before you were born, you know, probably before our parents were born, our grandparents were born, the philosophers, a whole bunch of people who came up, who studied, who wrote things, who wrote the curriculums. So basically this is an exposure and indoctrination into what's already there. And then after you graduate, it's not necessarily mandatory for you to go to college anyway in America. And well, I don't know how it is in other countries, but after you graduate from college, you can choose to pursue a master's. And a master's is basically you honing in onto a specific subject. You know, so let's say, for example, you go to, um, I'm going to use me as an example. When I went to college, I graduated with um, a bachelor's in health sciences. So it's kind of general. I chose health sciences specifically because I wanted to work in healthcare. You know, that's, that's where the uh, financial stability is at. But I wasn't really sure where in healthcare that I wanted to work at. Going to a four-year college gave me the opportunity for me to explore all the options in healthcare. And then towards my last two years in healthcare, then I decided like, yo, healthcare uh, leadership uh, is actually something that makes a lot more sense to me. So when I graduated after four years of university, my university course, I started my master's, my first master's in health services administration. Again, this is basically like a sort of like a niche, you know, in order for me to advance and be able to stand out within my peers, you know. Yes, a four-year university will get you a job, but then a master's is more so a lot more attractive. That basically say that you've mastered the art within this niche. You know, you know what you're talking about. You're not just, you haven't just been indoctrinated into the general field. You have honed in into that specific discipline. Now, a PhD though, a PhD stands out the most 
most because it's the most recognizable of all of this because not only have you been indoctrinated into what's already there you have you have mastered uh, a specific subsect of that discipline a PhD gives you the opportunity for you to study literally everything within that subject, that subject that has been produced so far, and then you can see what's wrong, what's missing, and then you can do your own research and add your own original thinking into the pool. So, so basically, you're walking into a, a discipline, you've studied all there is to study, and you're able to recognize that there's something actually missing. So you take it upon yourself to do that research on your own, come up with your own original thinking, and then add it to the general pool of knowledge. That's basically what a PhD gives you the opportunity to do. This is also why a PhD is the most respected, and this is why I am talking about this particular topic, why everyone must pursue a PhD. Now, for the next point of what I explained earlier, um, the metaphor part of this episode, the way I look at the American school system is I look at it in terms of a library. Imagine a library, right? My drawing is not that great, so please bear with me. Imagine a library. This is a house, a library. Okay, windows and doors. Imagine a library. This is a library that was created by people before you, maybe like 100 years ago, uh, 500 years ago, I don't know. But this library has been around for a while. And a group of people, intellectuals, if you want to call them that, have come together, built this library, and inside this library are books. Imagine the walls of a library, just a bunch of books everywhere. And just imagine that you walked into a library and all around you are books littered every corner of the wall. That to me is the way I see the American school system. A four year university is equivalent to you, the scholar, walking into a library that's already been built by people way before you and scanning all the books that have already been written. So again, you walk into that library, you just walk around and scan like, okay, I see this and I see this and I see that. You're basically being indoctrinated into what is already somebody else's thinking, somebody else's hard work, somebody else's thesis, somebody else's dissertations and things like that. Sometimes some of these things have been written like 100 years ago, 500 years ago, and sometimes they have been edited by a bunch of uh, people who have come afterwards who have pursued PhDs and added to knowledge, right? And then a master's is equivalent to after you have scanned, again, the bachelor's, after you have scanned, we start to see subsects within that library that you kind of, okay, I like this. Again, you walked around the library, you've seen several topics, and now you see, let's say, for example, astrophysics. Mm, okay, a master's is equivalent to you after scanning, honing in to astrophysics. You know, yet now you're reading a lot more about astrophysics. You're liking that. Or if you're into engineering, if you're into mathematics, economics, uh, sciences, um, medicine, uh, it doesn't matter what it is your field is. You are honing into a sub particular subset of that library as opposed to you scanning because they've already done that in your bachelor's. And then a PhD is equivalent to you after you have scanned this, right? You are now able to see, hmm, Something is missing here. I don't know what it is that is missing. So you decide to go do your own research to find out what it is that's missing. You're doing your research, you're putting two and two together and two and two together, but it's very obvious that something is missing. You don't know what it is exactly. This is why it takes so long for a PhD to finish, you know, because you're actually trying to figure out what it is. You have your intuition inside of you, like you're reading it, you're reading it, reading it, reading it, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What's written makes some sense, but the consistency doesn't make sense. So at the end of your PhD, you write a dissertation, which is basically, you've basically figured out what it is that is missing, and then you create, you write your own book, and then you put it on the shelf. You have contributed to the general pool of knowledge in the library. That's basically what a PhD is. Again, to further elaborate, metaphorically, the American school system, I'm going to use numbers to show this, right? So imagine one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, say 10. Let's pretend that these numbers are the numbers that you see instead of books when you walk into the library, okay? You walk into the li library, and instead of books, you see numbers, okay? These are numbers that a bunch of people have already come up with, people before you, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, maybe 500 years ago, they've already come up with those numbers. And then as a bachelor student, you're meant to learn these numbers and you know, memorizing whatever it is. And you know, after you learn one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, 10, 
you know, you basically graduate. When, if you can memorize that, recite that, you know, in your sleep, basically, you get a certificate, you're done, move on. And then a master's will be equivalent for you. Instead of memorizing or studying all of this, you just kind of focus on these two right here. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna focus on this this, these two numbers right here, two and four. If you're able to master this, like one, two comes after one and right before four is two and five comes after four, you basically get a master's if you've done well because one, again, bachelor's, you scanned, master's, you honed in on this subsect right here and you have basically mastered the art of two and four. Two being after one, two being before four, and five being after and you get a certificate, you get a master's, you graduate. A PhD though is not only have you honed in on this, a PhD is you're looking at this and then you're looking at all of this. You see, it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't really make sense per se. And you don't know what it is. You just keep looking at it like, hmm. Okay, so one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there is consistency here there's also consistency here, but there isn't consistency here. You don't know what it is that is missing. So you pay attention, you pay attention, you study it, you, you, you study day and night, watch videos, read books, travel, do whatever you have to do, but then eventually it hits you, something is missing here. And then in your dissertation, you figure out that what it is that is missing is three. Once you figure out that what, what is missing is three, you publish your dissertation and you graduate as a doctor in philosophy in the discipline between two and four. That's basically what a PhD is. Right? Now, and congratulations for getting your PhD, but do not get cocky because, because what you just figured out is three. Okay, that's the only thing you figured out. You're not special. There's still something missing here. This is a different niche that someone else graduating with a different PhD will figure out that there's seven that is missing, all right? Maybe both of you can come together and figure out, yo, we've been able to figure out three and seven are missing. So now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It makes a lot more sense. It follows a very basic mathematical rule that cannot be disproved. One, two, three, all the way to ten. That's a PhD program. But even that, do not get cocky because a person who is truly, truly, truly intelligent and insightful can see that this is not all there is. There is zero here. There is 11 here. Matter of fact, this goes on to infinity, right? Just because you figured out your little three, good for you. Good job for get figuring out. Your friend figured out seven. Also good for him or her that they figured it out. Together you can see, paint a better picture. Now this is what I call the pattern, which takes me to my next Point. If you have not figured out by now, the PhD that I'm talking about is not literally a PhD program, like a doctorate certificate, like you go to a school, you go do your own research and things like that. The PhD that I'm talking about is just your ability to walk into a library, AKA the world, you learn the ways of the world, just like you scanned in your bachelor's the books that's already been written. You learn the ways of the world. You have to learn the ways of the world, right? And then you hone in to a particular subset, um, whatever it is in life that you're interested in, whatever it could be beauty, hair, it could be accounting, it could be singing, uh, it could be makeup, it could be uh, curing cancer, literally anything that you have a natural, a natural affinity towards. Just like you walk into the library, you scan through the library, you find certain books that's Call, that call out your name and just like you pick through all of this figure out which subsect of these numbers find you find most attractive too and then not only do you pay attention to that subsect you make it much better you add to it this is why you must pursue a PhD program. Again, the PhD program, literally a PhD program is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this particular topic. Pursuing an actual PhD program, going, going to, to a university, you know, spending about four, between four to 10 years doing research, that is one of the many ways to pursue a PhD. Again, you do not have to go into a PhD program as in apply to an actual university and kill yourself between four to 10 years to graduate with a piece of paper. That is not the point that I'm making in this video. Again, a PhD program is the ability to be able to one, bachelors, learn the ways of the world, two, 
focus in a subset, and three, make it better. Now, that being said, you will actually come to realize that a lot of influential people in the world have followed this pattern. Again, they came in, they paid attention to what's already produced, they focused on a particular subset, and then they try to make it better. This is a pattern that a whole lot of great people have followed. Gandhi, Tesla, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, the Obamas, literally anyone who has made a big name for themselves. Literally anyone like who has done anything influential uh, and has added significantly to the human race. Every single one. They have followed the exact same pattern. One, they did the bachelors. Again, not literally, right? They walked in, they studied the ways of the world. Secondly, they focused on a particular subsect. And thirdly, they did their own thinking, their own research in their own specific way, and they added to that subsect to make it much better. Even MLK followed the same pattern. Rosa Parks followed this pattern. Malcolm X followed this pattern. Again, every single human being who has been influential, man or woman, black or white, Asian, Hispanic, doesn't matter who that person is, they follow the exact same script. Taking me to my next point. And guess who also followed the exact same script? Jesus himself. See, a lot of people forget this, especially a lot of Christians forget this. Jesus, when he was young, he started his bachelor's degree much younger than ev everyone else. I think I remember reading um, somewhere in the Bible that Jesus, he was about 12 years old or 13 years old. He would always go to the synagogues and, and hang out with the rabbis. Uh, and he was always asking questions. That is a bachelor's degree right there, believe it or not. So you're going in, you're learning the ways of the world, things that have already been written before you. So Jesus, again, a lot of people don't know this, a lot of Christians specifically, Jesus is actually Jewish himself. You know, his mother Mary is a Jewish woman by tradition, so which means that him, especially as a male, being born to a, um, a Jewish woman automatically is Jewish. So he went to the synagogue, he studied Judaism, he studied uh, the Torah, he studied um, all the books before him. So basically, again, again, Jesus is one of the youngest people to ever do it. He started really young. And I think he even started way before 12 years old, before the Bible even talked about it. I want to say somewhere around six years old or seven years old. But again, that is a bachelor's degree that he was doing. Now, not only did he study a bachelor's degree, he started with the master's. When he started saying that I did not come for the righteous, I came for the sinners. This is him studying a master's. He's honing in on a particular subset of people. Again, the same pattern. When you go into a library, you scan bachelor's or in the case of Jesus, when he walked into the synagogue asking questions and learning from people who have already understood what was already written before him and then he started to hmm okay i'm more interested in these subgroup of people the forgotten people the forgotten minorities you know the prostitutes the lepers the losers of society the ones that people will roll up their windows when they're walking by he started focusing on them again he said that he came not for the righteous but for the sinners that is again his master's program and then jesus did a phd program a lot of spiritual books would tell you that jesus disappeared at some point in his early teenage years and came back when it was about 25 years old the way i looked at it is that he went into a higher level of of learning which is a PhD program not only did he study day and night he came back with much more knowledge because he understood what was missing this when he came back is when he realized that I am the Son of God I am God you know so he tapped into his purpose that he saw how he can add his own original thinking into the pool because he saw what was missing and of course people try to attack him and he told them yo I have not come to abolish the law but I've actually come to fulfill them I have come to show you the way so he has come to make it better again and this is what a PhD program is. Yes, you're not necessarily condemning everything that people before you have written. You just see it, you understand it, you have mastered it, and you can see, hmm, something here is missing. I figured out what it is that is missing, and I'm going to add my own original thinking to make it much better. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what is called purpose. Your purpose in this life as a human being. I know we live in a society right now, especially in America, from Monday to Friday, you have so many people working jobs that they don't like, you know, from nine to five, literally every day. I understand that. And, and that, trust me, is by design. I'm not, I'm not going to go into details as to the powers that are making sure that this is by design, by the way, because this is a very sinister, there's a very sinister reason why that is by design. But again, this is a trap that we fall into so that you can forget what your purpose in this life is. This is especially so if you're a Christian or if you believe in God. If you believe in God, I understand if you don't believe in God, but if you believe in God, you have to understand that God is perfect in God's own way. God makes no mistake and God makes 
does not create anything by chance. So the sheer fact that you exist, doesn't matter who you are, means that God brought you here perfectly and necessarily. Necessarily meaning that there is a reason for you to be here. You're not just, your job to be here is not just to sleep and wake up, go to work, pay taxes, and just die, retire, um, lonely, basically. That's not what God brought you into this life to do. Even Jesus said that it is God's will for you to have life and have life abundantly. Look at what, look at the current state of the world that we're living right now. Many people, if not most people, people are not living life and living life abundantly. We pretend that we're living life and living life abundantly because we have all these vices to help us forget that we are not actually not aligned with the purpose that God brought us into this world. Again, that is all by design. I'm not really going to go into details because I like my freedom. You get but it. if you know what I'm talking about, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So my job is to wake you up so that we can start doing more PhD programs because the more we do more PhD programs, the more we're doing our purpose in life. And the more we're doing our purpose in life, all of us, more, the more we get it right and the more God is truly manifested in this world and the more we live life abundantly. Now, going back to this pattern, as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, you right? See, it's a very crystal clear pattern that just goes on infinitely. A mathematician will actually tell you that this number doesn't start with zero. It actually has negative one, negative two, negative all the way to negative infinity, all the way to positive infinity. So this pattern does not have a beginning. It does not have an end. It does not have a midpoint. This is why I like to describe God with mathematics and numbers. God is infinite. And this is also why I like to say that God is not a being, but God is being itself, which means that God is a never ending process. So every single time God manifests anything necessarily and perfectly, it is for a reason. And this, the sooner we align with this, what I call the pattern, the better for us. Okay. So the reason why the word is so messed up right now is because we are in denial as to what is, and this is again, by design, there have been people who have been able to tap into this pattern. And a lot of these people who have been able to tap into this pattern actually understand that this pattern is infinite in its own very nature, but they give you a preview of just this with a bunch missing. The reason why they give you a preview with bunches missing is because this malarkey, this confusion actually works for them. They are using their knowledge of the infinite as service to self. But the more we start challenging it and doing our own individual PhDs, we will start to fix the discrepancies in these patterns and we will keep going infinitely, infinitely, infinitely. Yes, it is impossible for us to solve all the discrepancies as human beings because these numbers are infinite and humans obviously are finite. And it is impossible for a finite human being to be able to comprehend infinity. But the point is that we are doing what we're meant to be doing as God has perfectly manifested us in this reality as human being, as opposed to just wasting time and being victim to the malarkey that is in the world. This is why it is imperative, categorically imperative, that literally every single human being get off your pod, stand at your feet, and pursue a PhD program. Again, the PhD program that I'm talking about is not literally like a, a doctorate in philosophy at a university. I'm talking about the same pattern that Jesus followed, the same pattern that God followed, the same pattern that literally every single human being that has been influenced should follow it, which is one, go into the word and study the ways of the word. Two, focus on a particular niche. Three, do research to figure out what's missing and then you share what's missing in the world to further develop that particular niche. Imagine if literally every single one of us is doing that. Like I'm focusing on my own niche, you're focusing on your own niche, everyone is focusing on their own niche and they're making it much better, much better. Collectively and congruently, we are able to tap into this one infinite pattern. We are able to align ourselves with God and we win by default. And now to take me to my very last point, hashtag, hashtag OPAP. OPAP is basically what I call Operation Pick a Problem. So, this is something that I came up with a few years ago before I even started my podcast and I'm so glad that I finally have a platform where I can talk about these things. Operation OPAP, pick a problem. Operation Pick a Problem, just pick any problem, literally any problem. Do not pick the same problems that I'm picking. Pick a problem that comes natural to you. I'm picking problems that come natural to me. Trust me on this one. A lot of people all throughout the planet, by design again, are so misaligned with their destinies. Trust me on this. This is what I call the indoctrination. Once you're born, the indoctrination begins. For most people, their indoctrination begins with their parents, parents who abuse them. You know, And sometimes even when you're born into a perfect family, you have a neighbor, you have teachers, you have whoever, siblings, anyone that can corrupt you and mess up your mind so you can forget the true purpose that God has brought you to this world. Even if you don't have any of those things, we have media, social media, the internet to 
mess up your mind so you can forget what God has perfectly manifested you into this world. But no matter what, the Spirit of God is always inside of you. A lot of people call this uh, the Holy Spirit. Christians call it the Holy Spirit. Some philosophers call it, call it the sense of divinitatis. Also, other philosophers like Immanuel Kant calls it the moral law. And Whatever. some other religious uh, teachers and religions call it so many different things. Whatever you want to call it by, it doesn't matter. It's the exact same thing. God lives inside of you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. These are the words of Jesus anyway. I remember, uh, I'm going to try to find the Bible verse where Jesus said no one can confidently come to you and point this is where the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is not there, it's not there because it's already inside of you. And Jesus also said seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. Basically translation, pay attention to the word of God inside of you. That thing that is bothering you, that thing that you feel like huh I am not aligned with my destiny. I should probably pay attention to it. You should probably pay attention to it as well. Because if you do not pay attention to what's inside of you, like that divine law, that God that is necessarily and perfectly manifesting from you, you will have what I call the Jonah experience. Basically, in the Bible, when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh to de deliver a message to the people of Nineveh, and Jonah said, yeah, I'm not going to do that, dude. I'm going to just go do my own thing. Guess what? Jonah got swallowed, and he spent... I don't know, many days in the belly of a fish. You can imagine how uncomfortable it would be to be in the belly of a fish. They're uncomfortable, right? Of course, I do believe a lot of that is metaphorical because the Bible talks in parables, so I don't think literally anyone got swallowed by a fish. I know some Christians believe that. I don't want to be disrespectful. If you want to believe that, believe that. But I read the Bible with my own discernment to know that I don't think an actual fish literally swallowed Jonah. But this is a representation of what your life will be. So every single time that you have that discomfort, that is the Spirit of God telling you that you should probably do what I ask you to do so that you can stop having this discomfort that you feel. The Jonah if effect. You, if you if you find yourself in a struggle relationship, that is a Jonah effect. If you find yourself in a job that you don't like, Jonah effect. If you find yourself in a career that you don't like, Jonah effect. If you find yourself with close friends that you don't like, that is also the Jonah effect. If you find yourself a family that you don't really like, that is also the Jonah effect. Any single time you have that discomfort, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, that is the Jonah effect. And the Spirit of God is already inside of you to guide you away from it. You have to just listen to it. You have to seek you first, the kingdom of God. In silence, as in this path of self-discovery is going to be painful, it's going to be treacherous. Again, going back to the story of Jesus, a lot of spiritual teachers will tell you that he walked away from his mother and his father. He was gone for seven years to study, to do his thing. This is basically what a PhD is program is you know like if you look if you want to look at it from a literal perspective when you're working on a phd program you're basically so scarce and busy like no one sees you really because you're too busy doing a whole lot of you understand that especially if you're doing a phd program for the right purpose like it has actually genuine genuine passion and you're not just getting a phd just so you be, can be called a doctor you see a deep sense of calling a deep sense of purpose and no one really sees you your family don't see you your close friends don't see you some people will even ghost you because they think that you are pretending to be too busy, but you understand that there is a deep necess necessity in your divine manifestation. This is especially more so when you see how jacked up this pattern that has already been given to us is, you know? So again, going back to the word, when you see how messed up the word is, that even gives you a deeper sense of purpose for you to figure it out and share with the word because that is your purpose. And the clock is ticking. The pattern. We have to start learning to unlearn that this pattern that we have been indoctrinated into is not the full picture. This is a messed up pattern that was given to us because someone or a group of people, I'm not going to call who, you know, again, I like my freedom. They are using it in service to self and they have created this world with all kinds of illusions to keep us subdued in a sleeping state. You need to wake up. This is basically what my purpose is to be a catalyst to wake people up to, to one, scan what's already produced in this library. Pick a niche, do research, and add your own original thinking. Operation Pick a Problem. Thank you so much. This is the end of today's video. If you liked how I was able to break all of this down, please share with your friends and family. Put this out there. Please help me out. I put in so much work literally every day and night. Like I have so much going on. Uh, it's night right now and I still have coffee and caffeine uh, flowing through my veins. This is nothing but passion. I have been able to tap into what God has brought me, brought me to this world to do, which is basically be a catalyst for more people to wake up and pursue more PhD programs. If you liked how I was able to do that, if you like how I was able to touch yeah. your soul and be able to incentivize you, please make sure to share this with everyone. Because again, the more of us were learning and waking up from this slump, 
slumber state, the better for all of us, myself, yourself included. What if you want to live in a world and reality where things actually work better as opposed to everything being struggle and you know you're living with so much anxiety and uncertainty and anticipation for any horrible news? Wouldn't you want that? I know I definitely want a better world that reflects that good God, especially if you believe in God, if you're Christian and you believe that God is not just good, but the epitome of goodness. So please share this video with everyone. Give me a thumbs up so that YouTube algorithm can pick this up and share with a whole bunch of people who need to hear it, which to me is literally every single human being. And just so you know, I'm also pursuing my PhD program right now. Again, not literally, I'm not enrolled in a school pursuing a PhD program, but this is my own PhD program slash dissertation. I have done my bachelor's, done my master's, and I'm doing my PhD program. So it goes both ways. Thank you so much for your continued support. Do not forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification so anytime I upload a video, you be the very first to be notified. Please follow me on social media at LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter at LTAU with Uche. My Instagram is UC underscore images. My email address is let's talk with Uche at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your continued support. Until the next episode, peace out.